it's important for you to keep your gel press in a good sturdy box that's airtight. I got this box from uh, Home Base uh, and it fits my jelly plating, which is the A4 size, which is 21 by 29.7. I got mine from Amazon uh, and I'll put the links for both of those things in the description below. Now, ordinarily, I would put non-slip matting underneath my whole setup there, but I forgot today, but you'll see later on in the video uh, that I do remember to put it on because the, the mat was slipping around and what have you. So that does help with all the slipping around. Um, so here I'm just putting some sellotape on to get all the lint off. So if that's something that's going to bother you, then that's a good idea to do that. Um, I always put some A4 paper at the side. You can use scrap paper, uh, any kind of paper really, and that is for um, rollering off the excess paint in between each addition, and it's something you should be doing really, um, not to be leaving the paint on. So as you can see, I've got a selection of rollers there. Um, I actually only use the small one for this video, but uh, I do use them for all sorts of things um and also uh my rollers that i've got there they are a cheaper version and they do make marks when you're rolling but i like the unintentional mark making effect that it gives me so that has actually become my thing so so when i'm rolling out and you're seeing all these marks i actually like it that way so so here i'm um doing a quick registration with the pencil there um because when you're doing a uh, dryer pulls with the gel plate the gel plate tends to move so therefore you've lost your original registration so i tend to do that which makes it a lot easier so you can see me putting a uh, an A3 sized piece of paper down underneath the mat. That's my registration because the paper that I'm going to be using for today's artwork is the same size. So that's also uh, part of my registration process. Um, I do intend to make a board I saw someone else on another YouTube channel have and I thought that was a really good way of getting the same place every single time. However, for my artwork, um, I don't sell my original artwork. I create prints and so I trim the edges. So that deckled edge effect that you do get when it's misaligned with the registration sometimes doesn't actually matter for me. But if you are going to be uh, creating original artwork, then that is this registration process that I use, th that will be problematic for you. So I wouldn't recommend that. So you can see me put in now, um, well, and you'll see the lines also with the roller that I was on about. But uh, so the paints that I'm using is acrylic and the one in the small jar, that's um, printer's blocking, which is fine to use both together. I quite like the effect that it gives me. Um, and I'll put a link to all the paints in the description, but I've uh, not long started doing this. So I just bought a big starter pack of acrylic paint from Amazon, a big box, and you get a load of colours. Um, and it's great if you're just starting out. Um, so that's the paints that I'm using. Uh, they're not the thickest of paints. Um, some are a bit translucent, but it's okay. It's all right. Um, good, good starter pack. So you can see now how the registration, it needs to be uh, quite spot on, really. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on, as you can see, probably the camera's wobbling. <laughs> um, and I use actually quite a lot of paint compared to some other artists that I've seen. But I like the way that it squishes in between the paper and the jelly plate. And when you get your pulls, you get an unintentional declamania effect, which I quite like that. And um, in the final prints, so as you'll see at the end, it actually looks quite good. Um, so I don't leave my prints on to dry like some other artists do. With some other effects I do that, but not with this one. Um, and I'm not going to clean my jelly plate and I'm not going to leave each print to uh, 
uh, dry in between each addition. It's all wet, so it's quite quick and successive. So I love that mustard colour. That's one of my favourite colours. As you can see, I've probably used over half of that already. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to go in to put some more colours on top now. And then I'm going, you'll see me create the actual shapes for the mountain contours. If things seem a bit awkward when I'm trying to film, it's because I've got a filming rig like in front of me, in front of my chest. So I'm trying to film around that. So <laughs> if that's why thing it looks like I'm doing things a bit awkwardly, I don't normally work like that, but it's just because I've got this filming rig that you can't see. So I just thought I'd explain that because I don't want you to think I'm a right Wally. <laughs> If you're new to art, I can't stress the importance of trusting the process. It's important to watch tutorials, but also at the same time, you can get lost in who you are as an artist. Because the minute I let go of that, the minute my art came out and it was just brilliant. And then I started creating that when I stopped trying to be another person's work you know I just needed to be myself so I can't stress enough the importance of trusting that process letting yourself go allowing yourself to make those mistakes and experimenting try every single art craft that there is to go out there try every medium because how will you know what your thing is if you don't try it and yet yeah, that's an expensive way of trying to get to where you need to be but you will get there eventually and everyone's different and it might take longer for some it for me it was a very quick process because i'm i need to i need to get to the end quickly i need i need like instant results i'm one of those kind of people but you've just got to be patient and it's just so important to trust the process and it's so easy as well i think when you start doing some artwork and you look at that and think, oh, no, that looks terrible. It looks nothing like tutorial. And it's so easy to just rip that piece of paper up and put it in the bin. Just don't do that. Always see it through to the end because I can guarantee you it will be all right in the end in some description. So, you know, it's so important. So um, I just thought I'd better say as well. So like this is my second pull there. So that's my two layers of paint. Now, I don't use um, paper that's like art paper. So it's not very thick. Um, I'll put the in the description the GSM that that particular paper is. But it's not. It's just, it's just cheap generic paper because I'm not selling my uh, artwork as a print. It's just I need it. Uh, to put into the scanner so it doesn't really matter so the problem with that is that it doesn't take that many layers of paint so you will find that you know uh, the paper the card will bubble slightly but you can work around that it still has the same effect and you know at the end uh, it will curl but that's not a problem because I just put a heavy book on top of the scanner lid and that sorts that problem out and when I store my original artwork in the folder, you know, eventually it just flattens itself out anyway. But if you were to be selling your artwork as originals, then this is not a good advice for you. You need to use good quality art paper that's got archival qualities, it needs to be thick and it needs to be something good that you can give to that customer. It needs to be fit for its purpose. Um, and this paper that I use is not fit for that. So do bear that in mind. So that's my mini brayer that's um, a printer's brayer. I got that from Amazon as well. Love the effect that that gives me sometimes. It just adds another level to things and it's really easy to use as well. So as you can see, I've marked T for top. So it's always important to do that because it's quite easy to get carried away and put your print on 
at the back of you or the side of you while you do the next layer and pick it up and think, oh, what, what, what side am I meant to be doing? So I've done that and then I've ended up messing a print up because I put it on upside down. So it is important for the first layer that you put on to mark what, where is the top. Um, just a, a little tip there out of experience. So you can see the paper's bubbling there and so the mat is slipping also. Uh, but you can work around that. I mean, this paper that I use, uh, God, it takes maybe between two and four layers, depends how much paint I'm putting on. So every time I've finished doing a piece of work, if there's quite a lot of paint left on the jelly plate, I try. I always do a ghost print. So um, I just use an A4 sized um, piece of, it's a mixture between card and paper. It's not paper. Paper's okay. It's good for collage and stuff, but I tend to, just whatever I've got handy, if I've got some things to use up, I tend to do what this is called a ghost print. Now, sometimes you can pull something off with the ghost print and uh, and there's the non-slip matting that I should have put on in the first place um but yeah with a with the ghost print sometimes you can pull it off and you get something really special that didn't really happen in this instance but some I like to keep all my ghost prints because I do use those in collage or with my card making or you know so that I mean that's not very attractive but it does clean your plate a bit and you know they're good to keep because you never know when you might need uh, to cut some out of that for a, a textured piece or whatever so um, that's always a good thing to do because you just never know what you're going to get and you may end up getting another good picture out of that so I've washed my jelly plate now I always just put it in like hot water with a bit of uh, fairy liquid uh, or on dish show you would call that I think in other countries and always store it in the box as well so uh, so now um, we're going to go so the, the print is dry now and as you can see it's the paper is curled but it's not a problem for me um, excuse how everything's all bunched together there that I don't normally have my trimmer in this area but I just could not be bothered to take down all the filming rig and uh, Put it to the other side of the room so but you get the general idea so what i'm doing here i'm cutting off all those deckled edges which i personally like those they're my favorite part but uh for the purposes of how i create my prints this is what i need to do so i take off quite a bit to make sure that i've got a good edge uh with everything so as you can see when i do one of the edges here the, there will be a bit of white so you'd really need to pay attention to make sure that you've got that um, so the shape doesn't matter all that much as long as it stays in a similar aspect ratio to the A4 then I can create the artwork and print it out on the A4 sheets of paper if you get what I mean so if I trimmed that down and it was a square sized then I would need to change my print from an A4 to a square sized because the aspect ratio would not be good so so as you can see I've missed a corner there so I'll trim it back a bit more just to get rid of that because that won't look good on the print um, when I scan it in as well uh, I do tend to crop the edges uh, slightly in just to make sure I don't get any nasty edges because I've found from experience when I'm printing sometimes um, the print on the edges isn't that great so uh, I tend to uh, cut it uh, you know um, oh excuse my memory I'm menopausal people uh, <laughs> Um, when I'm cropping is what I'm trying to say so so right this printer now I don't use this printer for a printer it's an old printer but it is a really good scanner because um, that printer was really cheap back in the day but the ink back in the day before these uh, mega tank print printers which is what I've got now uh, was just criminally expensive for the ink and I could not afford to run my greeting card business on that basis so i just use that printer now for the scanner um and i'm just using the scanning suite that's within my computer so i think everybody's computers probably will be different but the functionalities will more or less be the same so 
going to turn that around so you can see the white around the edges and this is why I now uh, crop everything in to make sure all the edges are nice and neat and snug and uh, it makes better for a, a better printout so if you are creating artwork with a lot of detail around the edges be mindful that if you're going to do this what i'm doing you know some things may get cut off so try not to put too much detail around the edges and bear that in mind so um i'm now going to also edit this so uh, it's worth mentioning that my original artwork and the the prints that I sell are look very different, but that's intentional. The person who's buying the print of the artwork does not get to see the original piece of artwork. Um, this is just a process that I do to improve on the original artwork. So it's kind of a bit like when we put makeup on. We're still the same person, but we just look a better version of ourselves. So this editing that I do... It's still the same artwork, but it's just a better version of it, if you kind of get what I mean. So um, so I'm just making sure that all the settings that are on my computer are the ones that I use. I use the same settings for my greeting cards, actually. Um, and then I set the output to high. I found that that gives it a bit of a better quality. Um, you know, the clarity on the prints and the paper that I use is just is remarkable, actually. So the printer that I'm using is also a Canon. I'll put that into uh, the description. And it's one of these mega tank ones. And uh, the ink, I can afford to actually get proper Canon ink. I don't need to use fake ink uh, because it's very reasonable. And it just lasts so long. It just has done wonders for my greeting card business. I mean, I'm printing anything up to 50 greeting cards a day five days a week so I've certainly put that printer through its paces and I've never had any problems so I would certainly recommend that printer so you can see there the Declamania effect looks so lifelike but it's just a flat print so um so that's it printed out and as you can see I've gone for borderless now I sell my prints on Etsy um unmounted unframed and it's just the print only so back to nip outside uh, to show you in proper daylight uh, what it actually looks like so you get a better look at the, the actual effect of it and it prints out really well I'll show you as well the comparison of the two prints so the printout after it's been edited and the original artwork so that's the original artwork and that's the edited version so both equally as nice <laughs> 